Not a soul on that stage. Not a soul on that stage who was running for the presidency on the Republican side, certainly nobody on the Democratic side, was willing to talk about the issue. No one, and, and when we had the first debate in February, the Reagan Ranch, Reagan Library, I mean, the, uh, the question came up, and only because I, I forced them to talk about it, and it continued to be that way throughout the entire course of the time that I was running, until it got to be about December. And by that time, everyone, well, there was only one person left, there was Rudy Giuliani, and there was a, a commercial. And I remember it was 11 o'clock at night. It was mid-December, freezing someplace in Iowa, in this little motel. I was eating my dinner, and I turned on the television, and there's a commercial. And it's Rudy Giuliani, Mr. Sanctuary City, right? Ran it for years, defended it every single time he could. Here he was saying, we've got to build the fence. If you elect me, I'll build the fence. I'll stop illegal immigration to this country. At that point, I picked up the phone, I called Babe Buchanan, she was my campaign manager. Wonderful person, by the way, great, great American. And I said, Babe, we can pull the plug on this. The last domino has just fallen. There's the last person left on that stage. John McCain, even by that time, was saying things like, I got the message. I'm still hoping he's still, that, that the message he got is the message we were sending. I'm not positive, but I think so. Now, the, the fact is we did change the entire course of the debate. Now, it is not unusual at this point in time, considering the situation with Obama and McCain, it's not unusual that they will not be talking about this issue. Number one, there isn't that much of a difference between them, unfortunately. That's the way it is. Number two, none of them want to bring it up because they know it is a hot button issue and it affects their base, each one of them. And no matter what they say, they're, they're fearful of losing support of someplace, somebody in their base. The closer Obama gets to the idea of enforcing our laws, it's going to alienate his base. The closer John McCain gets to saying things like, you know, um, amnesty wasn't such a bad idea, he's, he's going to alienate part of his base. So that nobody says anything about it, they're just not going to talk about it. But we're going to force them to no matter what. It's going to happen. It's going to come up through this campaign, I assure you. And, it's, and they're going to have to deal with it. And here's another thing, guys. When I first came to Congress, 10 years ago, I know that many of you were in the movement even then. And you know what it was like at that point in time. There was no one, no one, certainly no member of Congress that was pushing the issue, no one that wanted to deal with it. I would talk day after day, night after night. People would, would shy away. They'd walk, I'd walk down the, you know, the hallway and they'd move across and go, oh, he's going to bring up illegal immigration. I just don't want to talk about it. I know he's going to talk about it. Now, now, you have to have your tennis shoes on, to race down to the House floor to put an amendment on a bill trying to stop illegal immigration or get tough on the illegal immigration or do something about the, about the fence. Everybody wants to now and they pass they they pass Nancy Pelosi does not want to bring a full-blown bill to the floor a, a true bill that deals with the issue of defense and all the rest because she knows it will pass now that is a huge change my friends that is something you have got to be proud of and I don't care how many people show up today, and I don't care how many people, how many times I'm asked if I think the issue is no longer relevant, that nobody talks about it, so it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, if you're in Congress, you know it matters. You know it matters in your district. And therefore, you do what you can do to try to avoid, if you don't want to vote for it, you do what you do to try to keep it off the floor. Otherwise, you vote for, the, you vote for it the right way. Everybody is doing it today. Everybody's trying it on our side of this issue. And that is the best indication I can possibly have that we have done our job. It is still out there. John Q. Citizen, and I underline the word citizen. John Q. Citizen knows the power of this issue. They feel it. They will vote on they will vote in that direction. I'm telling you it's it's inevitable. This has gotten a life of its own now. It really doesn't need all the. It doesn't need the spokesman so much anymore because it has gotten a life of its own, to a large extent because of 
Tulajistan. It's a result of the work of the Minutemen and the people here who have been on the border, who have taken time out of their life because they knew the government was doing nothing. Well now, all I hear is how important it is to build a fence, how fast they're trying to do it, the raids that are occurring, you know, the, these uh, raids and all the businesses, and, and, and see, we're trying, we're trying, that this is what ICE is telling me all the time. Listen, we are trying, we're, we're, we're doing everything we can possibly do. We do. If you give me more resources, we'll do more. They're gonna build another facility out here, hold 1,400 people. So there is a change in the way in which the administration is looking at the issue, and it's because of a change in the way the American people look at this. I pledge that as President and I will regard the ongoing invasion of our country by millions of foreign nationals as a clear and present danger to our nation's security that it is, and I will therefore take swift executive action to confront and end it. I pledge to use the U.S. military and National Guard to secure our borders and coastal boundaries and to show the American people that our security is first and foremost the duty of the Commander-in-Chief the President of the United States. Okay, so we have Daryl Castle will sign that. Alan, thank you so much. Great, uh, as always, I've, I've got goosebumps. Um, and I mentioned that pledge, and there it is. Sign on the dotted line. <laughs> sign a contract with the American people. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we've got nobody wants to talk about this issue, Tom. So that's what we're doing today. We're trying to bring this issue back to the forefront to force the media to talk about the issue rather than... Do not be concerned about any media representation of either this event today or, generally speaking, when they talk about the fact that the two candidates aren't talking about immigration, it must not be an issue. Here's the deal. As far as I can tell, and from what I see in Congress, certainly what I saw when I was running uh, for the presidential nomination of the Republican Party. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Hold on for just a second because, you know, we, so many people are naysayers and, you know, while they're asking us, are we disappointed that we don't have a bigger turnout, remember that the turnout is in local communities and in our phone calls. Look what we've gotten since Tom really took the mantle and, and since we went to the border. We have almost double the number of Border Patrol agents. That's success. That didn't happen without Tom and, and all of us. We now have 300 new miles of fencing this year on the border. That didn't happen without Tom and us. All of us working together. We have more ICE agents, we have the raids, and we have changed the, uh, the perception in America about, about illegal immigration, and we've educated them. Now, Tom, I know you're not running for president. We wish you were still in there. But we appreciate what you're doing. We, we, uh, we issued a public challenge today through the media to all of presidential candidates, but specifically starting here at the DNC to Mr. Obama and Mr. McCain, and we're, we're asking to have a meeting with them to sign this pledge to the American people. And that pledge is very simple. To show Americans that the oath of office that you're going to swear to in January means something, and that our security and our sovereignty means something. And so the pledge is that, as president, they will not reward uh, anyone here illegally with amnesty and that they will deploy the National Guard in mass to both the northern, southern, and coastal boundaries of the United States and show the American people that we are valuable and that our security is valuable. So we hope that you would sign this pledge and right here. We've got Tom signing it. And we're taking this to Washington in September, Tom, to hold their feet to the fire. We're going to go door to door to every congressman and senator there with Roger Hedgecock and Fair and all of the people there. And we're going to ask every member of Congress, would they sign this pledge and tell the President you have our permission to use your executive power as Commander-in-Chief to show us that we come first 
and that national security and public safety is worth every penny and every person that we put out there to, to, to protect Americans and immigrants that are here legally. So thank you, Tom, again for being here. Appreciate it.